Hello everyone and welcome back to Engineer Tomorrow's uh, Thermodynamics video series. This is video number eight and today we're going to be discussing the uh, liquid vapor dome uh, and phase change analysis. Um, so here what I have shown is the temperature versus a specific volume plot. Okay and so I'm just basically plotting you know what's or how the changes happen with specific increase in specific volume and temperature changes. And in here I have what is called the liquid vapor dome. Okay, so if you if you look at this plot, on the left hand side of the dome, you have what is a liquid. Okay, inside the dome region, you have liquid vapor mixed. And then over on the right hand side, you have uh, a vapor. Okay, and what this dome allows us to determine is uh, you know, this is plotted with uh, different values of, let's say, water. You could see where you would be based on your, uh, your properties, so like temperature, pressure, specific volume, etc. So, describe this in more detail, let's start giving out some definitions. So, on this, on this left hand side, if you're away from the, from the vapor dome on the left hand side, I'll just say that it's like number one, you have what is called a compressed liquid. Okay, and this is sometimes called subcooled liquid as well. Okay, and so what, what is a compressed or subcooled liquid? So let's let's look at a container um, with a uh, um, with a piston on it. Okay, and you have H2O, you know, in here, and this is at pressure atmospheric and 20 degrees C. Okay, so from your you know, common knowledge, if you're at 20 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure, so just water in a container at 20 degrees C, it's just going to be water. You're nowhere close to starting to, you know, evaporate your water. You have to add heat to your system. Okay, that's a little candle or burner. I mean, big bit is that. You have to add heat to it to get to the um, to the uh, vapor liquid vapor dome. Okay, so if you let's say you're over here, okay, and you maintain a constant pressure inside of your system, okay, and you start heating this up uh, inside inside this container, you actually start increasing the temperature. You know, your pot gets hotter, and so what happens is, so you have a pressure acting on this piston from the top, which is, you know, pressure atmospheric, and this piston is just, you know, it's free to move. You start heating this up, the pressure inside, you know, balances out with the pressure on the outside, so this starts to expand, you know, it starts going up, with in and the temperature also starts increasing, and you have what happens right here, okay? So now you get you get to this point, okay, and let me define what that is. So different color. This section right here Okay. That that right there is called the saturated liquid line on the dome. Okay, so what is a saturated liquid? That is essentially when you get, okay, so say you're heating this, this piston up and you get to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, your water hasn't started boiling, all right, but it's about to. Okay, so that, that's what this saturated liquid region is. Okay, and then once you get to, to that point, and if you keep adding heat, okay, so let me, let me draw what's happening 
right now. Um, so you have your piston, your piston moved up. Okay, you have pressure atmospheric still inside of your container. And you are now at 100. 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, and you're getting ready to start boiling. Well, if, if you stick a thermometer in this container and you measure the temperature of the water when it's, you know, it becomes a saturated liquid and you keep adding heat, okay, so Q in, Q in, okay, if you keep adding heat to this, what happens is, and you can, you can test this out with a thermometer that can handle the temperature, um, if you put a thermometer in there, while it starts boiling, you can see that the temperature remains constant. Okay? And as this temperature remains constant, and if you maintain a uh, constant pressure, so say P is equal to constant, um, from experience you would know that they, you know, the specific volume is going to continue to increase, okay, it wants to keep expanding, but you're keeping all these properties uh, constant. So what happens is you get something, oh, you can't see that, you get this green line, straight line going uh, across the liquid vapor mixture, okay. So in that liquid vapor mixture, you end up getting to this position, okay? So I'm kind of trying to define the characteristics as I go along with the dome. So let me write that down with three. Okay. So what what you get to is the saturated vapor line. Okay, and what happens at the saturated vapor line is your water has completely boiled off and you now have gas or vapor inside of your container. You know, your, uh, your specific volume has changed. You know, it's continued to expand as you start creating this gas and you're maintained at pressure atmospheric and your temperature is still at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, and now you are on what's called the saturated vapor line. Okay, but let's say you continue uh, to add heat to it. Okay, what, what's going to happen in this dome region? Okay, so you keep adding uh, heat to it. What happens is you're, you maintain your pressure constant Okay, and your temperature suddenly begins to increase one more time. Okay, so you get to, let's say this is the position you want to get to. At a certain specific volume, a certain temperature. Okay, so your, your temperature continues to increase. So T. Let me describe what it is first. So look, this, this section right here is called a superheated uh, vapor. Sorry, I keep jumping around. Superheated. Is that four? Superheated vapor. Okay, and like I said, you have this scenario right here. Your um, your piston keeps expanding because you keep adding heat to it, and it, you know it, it keep your piston keeps moving up because your volume or your specific volume is increasing as well, and your temperature is now let's say 120 degrees Celsius. You're still at pressure atmospheric, okay, and your specific volume has increased again, and you can you can see that in that plot. You know your your temperature keeps increasing and your uh, specific volume continues to increase. 
Okay, and now you are in the superheated vapor region because your your temperature is higher than your uh, your saturation vapor uh, line for a specific pressure. Okay, which leads me to the next important important point, which is very very important. So this right here is a constant pressure line. Okay, so if you started out at a pressure that was higher, what you would see is you would you would begin at a higher pressure um, for, a, for a certain specific volume at a higher pressure you would have a different temperature. Sorry about that. And then as you start increasing it, you know, you would get something like that. You would have a constant pressure line through the liquid vapor mixture or dome. Okay, so the temperature remains constant as you're evaporating, and the pressure remains constant as well. And then once you're done with the evaporation process, you continue to increase like you see in the bottom one. So as you increase the pressure, uh, as you increase the pressure, your line goes up in the liquid vapor dome uh, plot. So your temperature versus volumetric or specific volume plot. Okay, and I hope that I hope that was clear. There's different properties for each of the different rotations, and oftentimes, uh, in your in the book or in your book in your thermodynamics book, it's actually in the back of the book. A lot of times, what they do is is that this saturated liquid line uh, for compressed uh, liquids, they usually say that you know some of the properties are similar to what is on the saturated liquid line. So they give you you know for a certain temperature, they say your pressure is the same because you can say the liquid is incompressible. Um, so I, I, hope that, I hope that was uh, pretty clear. I know I've kind of gone around in circles sometimes, but um, this, this is very important to understand. And if you don't, if you don't really understand it, please let me know. Uh, one, one final thing, the, the amount of heat necessary to transition from over here to over here, let me say that's it's Q. So Q uh, from liquid to vapor. There's, there's a certain amount of heat you have to add, and that's called your latent heat of evaporation. Okay, and that, that's characteristic to the to the fluid that you're using as well. So I, I hope that was helpful. Uh, please leave your comments in the comment section and let me know if you need me to go back and review certain things, and I'll be more than happy to do that for you. Thank you very much for watching.